Hi, this is Smiles from uh, Lawrence Studio back again. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to paint a hamster. This is my dog Riona who every time I talk to the camera wants to come and say hello because she thinks I'm talking to her. Anyway, so I'll show you step by step how I paint um, a hamster. I'll talk you through it. Uh, I'll tell you the colours I'm using and what I'm doing and why. Uh, so watch along and sit, see, uh, see me paint a hamster. Okay, so we've got our drawing. Um, what we're going to do first, just to make it simple, is to um, we don't really want these lines too harsh. We need them as a guide, but we don't want them too harsh, so I'm just rubbing them out. Um, the pencils I use, by the way, are um, Palomino Blackwing pencils. This one is the uh, Pearl version, which I, I find a little bit lighter than the, um, I can't remember the name of the black one. Right, so first of all, we're going to come up with, um, I think this is a bit of ultramarine and some burnt umber to come up with a sort of grey colour. And so we're just going to loosely fill in the areas. Um, at the moment, it doesn't have to be too much paint, it can be quite uh, loose. As you can see there, I'm just that up. Um, you can alter the, oh, that's me just blowing it to just to, to break that edge and so, so give it a, sorry about the back of my head in the way, there you go. Um, yeah just to, to break the image, to give it a little bit of looseness, a bit of sort of the artist's touch. So at this stage all of these um, paints will be I'll have to come in a little bit darker with them, as you can see, that when they dry, they tend to lighten up quite a bit. Right, so now we're mixing up um, the sort of gingery red colour. So we've got some um, yellow, cadmium yellow, I think it is. Um, and then that's cadmium red. And so we're making just sort of a nice ginger. And then we just touch in all the bits of ginger. Um, obviously, looking at the photo all the time, just to try and working out with the not only the colour but how um, the values, so the tonal values, and how dark they are. There you go. I'm just blowing that one up there. Just picking up water to put in that just to so because this is meant to be hair we don't want sharp edges so we after we put the color in um, we break all the edges up with a, by cleaning the brush making sure the brush is damp with a bit of something on the end of the brush there that I obviously didn't notice at that point so here yeah, we're just making mixing a little bit more of that and we just added a little bit of burnt umber to it so this is going to be a little bit more brown, this bit. Right, and that's uh, ivory black. Just darken that again whilst it's all wet, so it bleeds into each other. As I say, you, you've got, these are all different coloured hairs, so you don't have sharp lines in between them. They, they're sort of, they, they blend slightly from one colour to the other. So if, if I see any sharp edges I'll actually break them slightly with a little bit of water. You can do this even when it's dry. Yeah I'm just softening that edge there. Same with that one. Wet brush, a little bit of water on it, not too much. I tend to shake the brush which obviously you can't see because it's off camera but uh, I tend to just sort of shake the brush at the floor next to me. Don't want too much water going in there. A little bit more cadmium yellow. And then I'm going to try and sort of 
make this a little bit redder and a little bit richer. The red bits at the top of the head, around the ears, you know, on the, uh, above the eyes. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's it. Again, just pulling off a little bit of the um, ultramarine and burnt umber. The the blue and the well, blue and orange are complementary colours. So if you add one to the other, it will um, mute it slightly, so it'll make the blue a little bit more grey. Or if it's the brown or orange, it'll make the orange sort of a little bit more grey. Um, so constantly, I'm I'm sort of damping down the colors that I don't want you know because when, when you're putting a blue in you don't want it to be a sort of vivid blue you quite often want it to be sort of quite a gray blue here now I'm just putting the ivory black in um, the I use Sennelier paints um, and I do find that the Sennelier cadmium orange and ultramarine blue don't actually make a very clean gray um, they make quite a sort of pinkish gray so instead, um, nowadays I tend to use the burnt umber and then mix that with the blue, and that, that uh, makes a nice grey. Again, just soften the edges. These are meant to be patches of fur, so none of the edges are going to be... Um, sharp at all. Sharp would just, just wouldn't look right. So even if these are dried you can still just work into it with a brush and loosen it. Um, this is Langton 300 GSM paper. So I'm just coming in with the darks now. Um, as you can see, the that's it in between the ears there. That's sort of lightened up again, and I want that a bit darker. Um, same as the patches there. They're not black; they're grey, but uh, they need to be a little bit darker. Okay, I'll speed this bit up now. I'm just doing the eyes. The rest of the painting has dried. Okay, so I'm just doing the nose. Um, this is, I think, a little bit of uh, alizarin crimson, a little bit of very touch of ultramarine blue, and just some water. And you can see how I'll put this in, and then I'll actually dab some of it out because it's coming in a little bit too uh, rich. Okay, so with the eyes, I'm coming in with a little bit of ultramarine blue. Um, so that because the eyes don't don't really reflect just white, they'll actually reflect sort of um, a sort of blue, slightly bluey colour 
uh, going up to a white at one side. So you can see here that I'm actually just bringing a little bit of color out at the bottom. Um, and I think I'm gonna come back in in a second and that's it and just put it a little bit more blue, try and get them as blue as I can up above. But there you go, that's looking pretty good. And then get the, the shadow under the nose. Now, of course, with this paper, uh, this the brush I'm using is a, um, a sable brush. I've tried using synthetic, but unfortunately they just don't seem to last. So um, I have to use sable, which I prefer not to use, but they do work very well. Um, so with, with a 300 GSM paper and a good brush, you can soften and using a bit of tissue then pull out colour. There you go and just lighten areas of the painting just by sort of just gently scrubbing it, getting the water in there and loosening the colour and pulling it out with the tissue paper. That's obviously under the nose. Is, um, so what, well, yeah, what I'm basically doing here is I'm just knocking these back just a little bit with um, a sort of bluish grey Again, a little bit of ultramarine, a little bit of burnt umber mixed with it. And um, just because these, these are not. Okay, now referring back to the photo, the uh, sort of gingery red colour up there is, is again, it's, as it's dry, it's, it's faded. So adding it back in, making it a bit stronger. So this again is, is just some cadmium yellow and cadmium red mixed together. Um, then obviously you add a slight touch of blue to it, it'll knock, uh, knock it back slightly. Um, so it goes slightly greyer. Again, this is just referring back and forth to the photo all the time, looking to see where things are, trying to bring the details closer and closer in. So when you're painting, the watercolors always have certainly have tissue on the table, if not in your other hands, just to to pull back out all the times so you can make corrections. Right, so putting the darkness of the, uh, of the inside the ear in now. So now I'm going to um, just fill in the hands with a sort of like a, a, a bluey grey. And the same with the um, all the white fur down below. Well, so actually it look, really looks like a blue, but it's, okay, well it's, we'd call it a sort of a greyish blue. That's it. So what I'm doing now is just adding a little bit of water in and pulling out the highlights and the tissue. There you go. 
Don't forget that the nothing in in the real world is all one flat color. Everything is is all gradients of color all over them. So you need to really sort of look to see where the highlights are, and make them lighter, and look where the darker the shadow bits are, and make them darker. That's me just trying to soften the edge there. It was a bit of a bit of a hard edge. I need it softened up. Okay, time to come in and uh, do the whiskers. So the whiskers are going to be dark when they're on a light and light when on, when they're on dark. That makes sense. So if you're going over a black bit with a whisker, you're really going to want to make it look light using a little bit of white gouache. And if you're going over um, a light bit, then you're going to want to make it dark. Now, the thing you've got to be careful is that you don't go too thick. If you do go too thick with these, you're going to end up with them looking sort of right, really not right. The other thing is you, you often don't want to go too dark with them, just to try to assess um, how dark they should go. Um, I mean, the, the other thing is if you go in with a sort of grey, you can always uh, darken it a little bit afterwards, um, although it, it is quite difficult with a narrow whisker. So that's all the dark ones. So you can see that we've got like black underneath, underneath the mouth. So we're going to need to come into that some light ones. Now just put his nostrils in, all the little shadows under there. It's looking pretty good. Yeah, I've decided with that one that I just came in too too dark with it. So come in with a brush, run back and forth over it and soften it slightly. Now same there. Something I do tend to struggle with is finding brushes that are narrow enough. Um, really could do with a very fine rigger, uh, which I don't really have at the moment. I need to sort one out. Okay, so this is Windsor & Newton Designer Gouache. Um, now there's a balance. If you don't add water to this, it's very difficult to actually get it to go off to the brush because obviously these are soft watercolour brushes. Um, if you add too much water, you end up with it, it just comes out as a grey. So you're going to have to sort of just practice with this. Uh, you can see there where I'm going over the dark bits. Um, they have to be white to go over the dark bits there, and, the, and the, yeah, just adding a little bit of a highlight in there as well. That's better. So gouache is, is great for adding highlights afterwards. Um, I'm not the sort of painter who likes to mask and plan things beforehand too much. So um, that, that looks quite white there, it looks wrong, but it, it does tend to dry a little bit grey, um, so you may have to work into it two or three times to lighten it up. Now it's these very fine little hairs that really make the difference in a painting. So you've got the large shapes, you've got the sort of the ears, the head, the hands, these are all quite sort of large shapes, blocks of colour, like the ginger around the eyes. Um, and what really adds the magic to a painting is the, the very fine lines. You've got that balance of shapes, so you've got the balance of the large shapes, and you've got the balance of the very fine shapes. So now this is this is the final bit where you come in with the gouache, and it's like it's almost like the magic. It's, it really does just add the little details that catch your eye when you look at it. And again, with, with just with with the watercolor, with the gouache, you can just bring a uh, piece of tissue in and just just knock it back off if you need to. There you are. I can even do it with my finger. Did a little bit too much there. That's better. 
I often do that is, is I use my fingers to push the paint around, just making sure that you've got clean fingers. What I keep doing is I go to move the paint and I've still got some red from something else or some black and I end up smudging. So you've got to be careful of that. So these are just the sort of hairs in the ears or the, the highlights in the ears. So just putting the shadow on the hand because obviously the fingers are bending down and it's making it sort of appear a little bit more 3D. Also just, just cleaning up the shape a little bit on them, you know. You know, putting a crack between the fingers in there. And just bringing that one to a slight point there, that's better. That's pretty good. So this is really what, what makes the painting pop is to have this you see I've just sort of just brought the blue in at the top but kept that little fine little lighter bit at the bottom of the reflection in the eye. And that really does make it pop quite nicely. Okay, so we just bring in just make the colours a little bit richer. This is, this is really, it is, this is all about observation. It's about looking and looking and looking at what you're painting, at, the, at the, the source photo and then looking at your painting and trying to judge, just like spot the difference between the two of them. Okay, so I'm signing it here, but I'm a little bit um, too soon on that because I just realised that there are other bits that I wanted to do on it. Not a lot. Um, so we've got the ears. Um, the hairs in the ears aren't really very obvious in this, so I wanted to work on that. The other thing, which I don't show you on here, but you'll see in the final photo, is that I've actually brought just a bit of loose paint, um, greys and blues, um, down to either side of the hamster. Um, it just I just felt that it was a bit naked without it. So this is me just adding in gouache again, white gouache, just adding the hairs that run around the edges of the um, ears. There you go, that's better. Same with that one. And that's it, all done.